which I think is relevant, but it has ethics. And so there is an ethical dimension to this question, and I would like to make sure that we look at that ethical dimension. The requirement of the question lends itself to analysis. The requirement of the question says, without adjusting your answer, discuss the ethical and accounting implications of the above intended sale of assets to many by BOA. So we've got the word and within our requirement. We're looking here at accounting. We're looking here at ethics. And presumably the split, given that it's eight, is four and four. We need to read the mini case study. We need to read the mini scenario. This has got nothing to do with part A and part B. This is a separate little story about the property. Boa has a property with a carrying value of two. This property has been revalued at the year end. So at the year end, it has been revalued to two. So its fair value is two. It is worth two. And there is a revaluation surplus of 400,000. And that has been correctly recorded in other comprehensive income, other components of equity. So previously, it was in the books at 1.6. Now it's in the books at two, we've got a gain of 400. <clears throat> the directors were intending to sell the property to Mini for one shortly after the year end. Boa had previously used historical cost for valuing the property. I've got three or four or five different things exploding in my head just thinking about the accounting. What are you thinking about? If you, if you revalue a property, where does the gain or loss go? Does it go to P&L or does it go to OCR? So they dealt with it correctly. So there is a correct recognition of the surplus. The PPE gains and losses don't go to P&L, they go to other comprehensive income and therefore they appear in other components of equity. Excellent. Now in a minute we can talk about the disposal. I don't know, am I, am I pushing this a bit hard? But let me go again. 
what are we being asked about? We're being asked to discuss uh, the accounting implications. If you revalue your asset up, I think that has a deferred tax implication. If you revalue your asset up, there will be uh, no current tax assessed. But what you will have is a taxable temporary difference and a deferred tax liability. So what we've got here is a simple note that a revaluation gain has no current tax assessed, increases the carrying value, but not the tax base. So we are creating a taxable temporary difference and it creates therefore a deferred tax liability. So it's a revaluation gain, there's no current tax assessed, it increases the carrying value but not the tax base, it's a taxable temporary difference and there's a deferred tax liability. Don't write any more than that, we're only trying to get a mark. Yeah, there's no, there's no tax rate given. I mean, it wasn't even in the examiner's answer, but it's a relevant thing that you would get a mark for. Because if you are revaluing, that has a deferred tax implication. So, not only have we revalued the asset, but we are selling the asset. Who are we selling the asset to? Our parent company. So, yeah, who am I? I am Boa, and I am proposing to sell the property to Minnie. So, if we are the, and we've done this before, if we are the subsidiary, and we're looking to sell something to our parent company, that is a related party transaction. So the accounting issue is a very open scenario. The accounting issue, the subsidiary is selling it to the parent. Therefore, the sub is related to the parent by definition. So it's a related party transaction and it will be eliminated in the group accounts. Now we've got some numbers and I've sort of teased you by avoiding the numbers. Um, but what do you think the profit or the loss on the disposal will be? Because from the perspective of the individual company, the individual company will still report a profit or a loss. It's in the group accounts that you eliminate that transaction. So there is still, I would suggest, a profit or loss on disposal from the perspective of BOA. Oh, you can't read that, can you? Now, I do not think a calculator is needed. Profit or loss? Loss. How much is the loss? One. Yeah, correct, correct, correct. So what we've got here is the proceeds. The proceeds are one. What we've got there is the carrying value of two. And so therefore we would have a loss of one. I.e. there is no recycling. There is no recycling of the gain 
of 400 in equity back to p &L. There is no recycling. Yeah? So you don't reclassify. You're not going to say the loss is only 600,000. I mean, if you were to bring the gain back through the P&L, that would be double counting, that would be recycling, that would be double counting, but there is no recycling of the gain. Now, that's all about accounting, because there were four marks available, and I think those four marks were sort of okay. The revaluation surplus goes to equity, you can say that. <coughs> Yeah? It's an intercompany transaction that needs to be eliminated. You can say that. It's a related party transaction. You can say that. There is a profit or loss on the disposal. You can say that. And it's a loss. Now, whether or not you would come up with the deferred tax, I don't know. Maybe that's just me showing off. But I think there's enough there for us to get two or three marks, yeah, in respect to the accounting. I've got to change my hat, I've got to change my approach, and I've got to think about ethics. take a time out here for a second. Let's imagine, so we don't have to imagine, I'm married. Yeah, I'm married. Yeah, been happily married now since 1985. So what is that, 32 years, something like that? Anyway, we're happily married. All right. So uh, in our relationship, I have learned never to say I. And I've learned never to say my. So I should never talk about my wedding. It's always, I can always get corrected, or as used to get corrected, it's our wedding. Yeah? So I should never say it's my house. I should always say it's our house. Because that is the, the nature. So our wedding vows, so when we stood up in church and we got married, yeah, uh, the, the, the wedding phrases that we have uh, when we get married include phrases like, uh, in sickness and in health, yeah, uh, for better or for, for richer or for poorer, yeah, and we also say, all that I am I give you, yeah, and she says, all that I am I give and I say, all that I am. <laughs> Let's imagine I have a property. Let's imagine I have an asset which is worth two million, and I sell it to you for one million. What's my wife going to think? Who am I accountable to? I'm accountable to her. So this is our asset, and I'm selling it to you cheaply. I'm very confused. She is very upset. Something wrong. There is something corrupt. There is something wrong with this transaction. If I have an option to buy it back again, maybe it's a loan. But there is no suggestion of a repurchase arrangement. I, in this context, I am Boa. And I'm selling an asset to who? Mini. And Mini is my shareholder. Mini is my parent company. Mini is somebody who owns 70% of me. And I am under Mini's control. So Mini makes me do things. I am BOA, I am controlled by my parent company. And my 70% shareholder, my parent company, is making me sell an asset for less than it's worth. Is there anything unethical about that at all? If I sell you an asset cheaply, my wife will be very upset. Who is upset? 
if Boer sells to Mini the property cheaply. Who is upset? Mini owns 70% of the shares. So if Mini's not going to be upset, who is going to be upset? The NCI. The NCI are going to be absolutely livid. Yeah? This is a valuable asset. These are resources. These are profits. If we're going to hand out profits to our shareholders, if we're going to make a distribution, we can't just only give all of the assets and all of the profits to one shareholder. We've got to deliver them evenly across the board. So this is unethical. Yeah? It's, it's, it's probably more than unethical. It's probably illegal. But it's very difficult in a P2 exam to bring law into play when one minute I'm in Malaysia, the next minute I'm in Singapore, the next minute I'm in Hong Kong, Vietnam, whatever, and, you know, somebody's marking the scripts. So it's not about a legal, uh, your understanding of your country's legal system. But it's definitely unethical. You're cheating the NCI. <coughs> You're cheating the NCI. So in terms of ethics, this is a sale at under value so needs to be considered so needs to be considered with care the sale is to the parent to the 70% shareholder who benefits from the transaction. So the sale is an undervalue, so it needs to be considered with care. The sale is to the parent company, the 70% shareholder, who benefits from the transaction, who controls both. It is the NCI of BOA that is disadvantaged. That is cheated. Distribution of profits distribution of assets to shareholders should be equal. So the sale is under value, so it needs to be considered with care. The sale is to the parent, to the 70% shareholder. They benefit from the transaction. They control BOA. It is the NCI of BOA that has been shafted. It's the NCI of BOA that has been disadvantaged. It's the NCI of BOA that has been cheated. The distribution of profits, the distribution of assets to shareholders should be equal, should be fair. So the distribution of profits, the distribution of assets to shareholders should be equal, should be fair. This is showing a lack of integrity. This is showing a lack of integrity. It looks dishonest. It looks dishonest. It looks illegal. We should not try and cheat the NCI. They have rights, yeah? Ethical behavior requires, uh, you see, I'm writing too much, I'm getting too excited. <laughs> Ethical behavior, yeah, yeah, requires honesty, transparency, doing the right thing, and we should not be a party to this scheme. Blah, 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 blah.